And welcome back to Nando Talk, guys. Plenty to be excited about. We're going to be talking about the Miami Dolphins 2022 schedule. And more importantly, I got a new mic. So finally, we won't be whispering. No, we'll be sounding nice and crisp. It'll be perfect for you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for supporting. Let's keep upgrading. Let's keep talking. Because now, without further ado, let's get to this 2022 Dolphins schedule. You know, it's going to be a fun one, guys. We've got some primetime games. That's the first thing I looked at. On Christmas, week 16, as you guys know, season ticket holder, 343. Hold it down, baby. Great section to be in. But on Christmas Day, 1 o'clock, against the Green Bay Packers, One, not only am I happy that we're playing the Packers at home rather than away because that's a cold-weather game, but Christmas Day, what a unique experience, guys. If you could go out to that game, I know tickets might be a little jacked up, but it should be a fun one to experience, you know, especially if your family likes football. It'll just be just a unique experience. How many other times will the Dolphins be granted a Christmas Day game in Miami? You know, Christmas in Miami, what a beautiful sound that is, you know. I know we wanted to see a little bit more prime time, but we do get the Steelers on Sunday night. Brian Flores will be coming back and we'll be getting a little bit of a revenge game, you know. Um, aside from that, it's just fun to play against the Steelers Sunday night. Um we're going to hopefully be very competitive about it. Um, but we'll talk about that further in the schedule breakdown. I was bouncing around a bit, but let's get to it. Week one, the New England Patriots. Fun, fun times. We'll be smacking the Patriots yet again at home, as we always do. Mac Jones, I'm not afraid of you. Mac Jones is whack Jones. Two is better than you. This kid used to hold Tua's jock strap at Alabama, and he'll be keep holding the L's that Tua's handing him. Tua will not lose to him. He's already 2-0 against Mac Jones. Tua and O. He'll be 3-0. Now, to start off the season, I love that we're playing the Patriots. You know, it's a division rivalry game, so it's a nice way for us to judge against a competitor that we always play against. And it is a little bit tough, obviously, all jokes aside. The Patriots always play well. Belichick is a great and phenomenal coach. Um, he can always devise up some schemes, so it'll be nice to see what a, such a veteran, how Mike McDaniel handles up to that. It'll be a great first coach, head coaching test. I think it's a win, though, which is important, because then we go to Baltimore, and then we play Buffalo at home. For these next two games, I think we're going to go 1-1. One and one. I would love to say we're going to start the season off 3-0, and but realistically, we're going to start off 2-1, and one, which I'm fine with. If we go to Baltimore and win, you know, I think we did find a formula for it last season. I loved going to that Ravens game on Thursday night. Beautiful to watch Tua play. But more importantly, our defense just knew how to get to Lamar Jackson and rattle him. I get it. There was injuries for the Ravens. They weren't that complete team that they are today. But, you know, J.K. Dobbins will be back. But they did lose Hollywood Brown. It's just Rashad Aitman. And I think it's like Proj, like Proch. I don't even know. Like, I can't even name you the other receivers. I don't really care because they don't inspire any fear in me if Rashad Bateman is your number one receiver. You know, Xavier Howard will lock this man up. So it just all comes down to can we stop Lamar Jackson? And last year, we did that very well with Javon Holland. Shout out the boy right there on the jersey. And then the pink, that then Snowman is a, a good one to have. He loves to blitz and he's very athletic. He can actually get to the QB. Brandon Jones is very similar. And that sense, that role we gave him against Baltimore, those two young safeties were just humming it down. And then, oh my God, it was beautiful to see them rattle up Lamar. If we keep up that pressure, and you know, we did get Channing Tindall, who is designed to be a QB spy. He was excellent at that at Georgia. Hopefully he'll be doing the, against that against Buffalo and against the Ravens. Um, it'll be nice to see how our defense reacts to those mobile QBs. I do think we can beat um, the Ravens. If we don't, we have to come and we have to beat Buffalo at home. I actually kind of think that week three Buffalo win is very important because if not, we don't play Buffalo again until week 15. We can't get swept by Buffalo this season. It's very important. That's a very big benchmark for this Dolphins team. It's something very important to our fans to be competitive against Buffalo. Obviously, if we're competitive in both games where we go in two, you know, tough breaks. But hopefully we split the season one and one, and it all starts at home because if we lose, there'll be that impending dread of, dang, we got to win in week 15. So the Dolphins have to win that Buffalo Week 3 game, in my opinion. So if we lose against the Ravens, I understand that. I just want to be competitive the first three weeks. We play the Bengals in Cincinnati. That's a toss-up. Uh, I think it's we're going to have to really judge on are the Bengals contenders. 
like we we've seen are they gonna be able to hold up that offensive firepower is it gonna keep clicking which i think it will um and will the dolphins defense be able to stop that so it's gonna be fun those first four, like four games are nice tests for the dolphins defense and for our offense they're tough competitors if we go two and two in those games you know those are some of our hardest games of the season as long as you don't go one and three we're fine i think we can go two and two at least maybe three and one um specifically that patriots game will win hopefully that buffalo game we win and if not we've got to beat the the the, the if we don't beat buffalo we've got to beat the ravens and the Bengals. to so sweeten it up at three and one you know we'll say we lost to buffalo but at least we're three and one you know then we play the new jersey jets yeah the jets gross green jets sucks 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 these cats still suck I get it. They're excited. Oh, look, we replaced 10 starters on the team. That's terrible because your team was so bad last year that it's just easy to just replace your starters like that. I get it. You had a great draft. You had three first-round picks. I get it. You've got talent on the team. You've been drafting in the top five consistently, at least in the top 10. You guys are a settler of the AFC East. The Dolphins will smack them in MetLife. I know a lot of Dolphins fans are going to the MetLife takeover. It's going to be a fun one to see, you know. I love the support we always get in New York. We blank them out, and we always mess them up, too. So we're going to sweep the debts again. So right there, I'm pegging us. We'll say it. we went 2-2 two and two in the first stretch to be safe and realistic. We're 3-2 and two after the Jets week 5. We're looking positive, you know. We play the Vikings week 6 at home. I think we beat the Vikings. They really just have Justin Jefferson and, you know, that dealing. It's not that scary. It's not that impressive. Um... I, they had that receiving tandem, but I think Xavier Howard, like Byron Jones, Javon Holland, like coached up under Sam Madison and Pat Sertain can lock them up. And Kirk Cousins doesn't really inspire a lot of fear in me anyways. So then Dalvin Cook is going to be the guy we've got to really watch out for. I hope, again, Channing Tindall is going to be big in that. I didn't touch him against I, I didn't touch up against it with the Buffalo and the Ravens game. But again, Tindall is a very athletic linebacker. He ran a 4-4-7, I think, or a 4-4-2, something ridiculous like that. Sub 4-5. Um, he's 6'2", very rangy, very big. He knows how to stop against the run. He knows how to like stop against the pass. He's a pass rusher. He can QB spy. Very athletic. Very nice tool to have on the defense. He can, he's going to be very helpful against mobile QBs like Lamar Jackson and Josh Allen. But he's also going to help against great running backs like Joe Mixon and Dalvin Cook. So it's a phenomenal piece to add on the defense. So right there, I think we go four and two. Bye bye Vikings. We come. We play the Steelers, man. I think we'll smack them, you know. That's pretty easy, bro. Like, it's a tough game for sure, but they, they're going to be starting a rookie QB or Mitch Trubisky. I'm not terrified of either. Brian Flores, like, we're we having the energy to prove against that he was wrong about our team, about our players. I have to believe that at this point in the season, if we're 4-2, the Dolphins will be rallying for Tua, especially in the light of Flores coming back home to Miami. We'll have to smack them up 5-2. Five, five and two. We're looking pretty. I love love to see it for the Dolphins so far. We go to Detroit. Again, I'm not even going to really touch on them. These guys suck. You know, Jared Goff, you know, he's fine and dandy. Dan Campbell, you know, thanks for what you did in Miami, but you're in Detroit now. You guys were the number two pick in the draft for a good reason, and I don't really see them making that much improvement. They signed a bunch of random receivers this offseason. Um, no one real true. I get it. Amon Ross St. Brown is still there. I get it. They got Jamison Williams. Um, who's coming off injury? They could be exciting down the road. I think I'm not. I'm, I'm always just, I was trashing a bit the Lions. I think they're promising in the future, but this season I'm not terrified of, of them at all. So right there we go. Bada bim, bada boom. We have. You went from what? Five and two, six and two. Let's hit it, baby. Go to the. We go to the Bears. Realistically, if we're, we're probably going to stay at those two games in the NFC North. We'll stay in the North probably, considering Detroit and Chicago are so close, and they're back-to-back games. I know that for the for the Chargers and the Niners game, we requested them to be together so we could like just stay on that West Coast. We'll probably do that for the North as well. Um, so Detroit, um, that's a win. Chicago could be tough if they improve, um, especially since you know I've got to start breaking some leeway. Um, I don't want to just say that's a win though. Um. So we'll see though. Um, I don't know. I'm I'm trying to see how I feel about the game. I really haven't looked at the schedule, guys. I'm just kind of just figuring it out right now as I go. Um, I didn't really want to prepare. I wanted to have fresh, unbiased eyes. 
Um, I just know mentally about that the Bears, if Justin Fields is balling, it could be an interesting battle. So I'm just still going to give it to the Dolphins, man. The Bears don't really inspire much confidence in me either. I'm really just really high on the Dolphins, guys, I guess. This is exciting time, 7-2. and two. We, we play the Browns at home. Deshaun Watson will either be coming off a suspension or still suspended. Uh, I really believe, again, the team rallies around Tua. We go, we smack up Deshaun Watson. Uh, we will abuse that guy like he abuses people. Um, that guy is a criminal, and we will do criminal things to him. Mess that boy up. Um, wow. We'll see if that makes it past editing. I don't really edit, so probably will. Anyways, boom, keep going. That's a W for Miami Dolphins. We enter the bye. Week 11, at a nice 8-2. and two. The Dolphins get to rest and recover. And it's beautiful. And we get to finally heal. Hopefully there's no big injuries. We'll be able to dissect how Daniel's season is going. 8-2 and two is obviously the me being very generous, guys. Um, realistically, we can maybe go... You know, eight and two, we can go, hmm, five and four is the floor. I've maybe real, more realistically, we're going to go instead of eight and two, we'll go seven and three. Um, but I don't really see us dropping below 500 before the buy. We're going to be very positive, we'll be very strong, and it's very important that we collect our wins. You know, seven and three, no, set, yeah, seven and three, six and four, the minimum, I think is the, lo- the worst the Dolphins can do to be competitive. You know, we'll beat. The Bills will beat the will be the Texans. Okay, so I originally have us going eight and two going into the bye. I'll temper down, be a little bit more realistic. We'll say we're seven and three. Okay, because then we go to the Texans and that's a dub. You know, that's eight and three right there. Davis Mills is, you know, that long neck man is 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 okay, but at the end of the day, the Dolphins are just a better team. You know, it's admirable what the Texans have done, but we really messed up in that trade. You know, thank you for all those picks, guys. You've gotten us some wonderful guys. But at the end of the day, the Texans, with Davis Mills and not much weapons besides there to help them, the defense not inspiring much fear either. The Dolphins should beat that, guys. I, I really don't think we understand how good this offense of Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle are, are going to be. They're going to be commanding so much attention. Unless you have an elite secondary, like we're going to be coming up right now to, um... With the Chargers and the Bills away. Um, and that little stretch is about to get a little tougher again. Unless you have an elite secondary, you're screwed. Because you've got to either drop a safety on Tyree Killer, You've got to drop a safety on Jalen Waddle. And then you've got Mike Gusecki up the middle. You've got Cedric Wilson making plays. You've got Ezekiel Ekonomu. Ekonomu? Easy E. you got Easy E just making other plays on other packages, man. It... We'll have the running game just firing on all cylinders with Raheem Mostert, Sony Michelle. Like, pick your poison, guys. The Dolphins will be there to make some noise. So, yeah, I think entering week 12, we're at least 8-3, and three, hopefully. Because then we go to the play the Niners, and as much as I would love McDaniel to beat his former head coach to show his roots, I do think Shanahan knows him well enough that it'll be a competitive game, and it'll be a very good measuring stick against the NFC, against a team that's been to the Super Bowl, that has that experience, that has a good amount of veterans. Um, I do think Trey Lance is going to do well for you guys, San Francisco 49ers fans, if you're watching this. So congrats. I think he's a good pick. I was a little surprised at three overall, but Shanahan's got that eye. And if I trust McDaniel, I big time trust Shanahan. So good pick for you guys. Enjoy that, man. Um, I don't think we'll lose that. So eight and four. We go play the Chargers. Big statement game. Big statement game. The Dolphins will beat the San Diego Chargers. The LA Chargers is what I mean. But I don't respect you guys, so I'll just go with your old school name, I guess. Because the Dolphins are going to smack them. No, not smack them, but they'll beat them. And in a statement, the team will rally once again. This is all about rallying around Tua. Showing the haters wrong. That Miami is a competitive team. That we've got one of the best defense, if not the best defense in the NFL. That Tua Tagovailoa Tagovailoa is the man to lead us to the playoffs. That the team respects him because this is the real world, okay? They're not going to just line it around. Obviously, they support their QB or else they would be making more hard-pressed moves. Mac McDaniel in the front office would have just made more trades. I keep saying it. They support Tua, and we should too. The team will keep rallying, and this is a statement by if we beat Justin Herbert in Week 14, I think all the noise quiets down. At this point, we'll have beaten Buffalo. We'll we'll beat the Pittsburgh Steelers on on Sunday night and beat Flores. We'll beat the Browns. We'll beat the Chargers and end this Tua nonsense. Tua is the man. Tua time. We'll be baking to the playoffs. 
will be going 9-4 and four at that point. Justin Herbert is good and all, but that man doesn't go to the playoffs. He doesn't come clutch in the big moments. This moment, this media around this game will be too much for him to handle, and he's and he's going to battle Admiral B, but Tua's going to beat him out for it. Mike McDaniel's going to co- out-coach them. Frank Smith is our offensive coordinator now, and he knows how Herbert operates, and we're going to mess him up. It's going to be a fun one, guys. We'll be getting a lot of pressure. Yes, the Chargers upgraded their defense by bringing in J.C. Jackson and Khalil Mack. Khalil Mack is old, and J.C. Jackson was getting burned by the, uh, when he was on the Patriots. I'm not afraid of either of them at this stage in their career. Yes, they make me a little nervous, but I'm not afraid. So the Dolphins will win 9-4. and four. Week 15 in Buffalo. I think we split the series. So, you know, if I said we beat them in Week 3, I think we, lo- we lose in Week 15. You know, that'll make us 9-5. and five. In a bad world where we lose in Week 3, it's going to be a very big game. Um, if we just beat the Chargers Week 14, I think we can carry that momentum and energy to beat Buffalo in Week 15. And that will be the game we prove the narrative wrong about Tua. So that'll be a fun game. But regardless, 9-5 and five entering this point. Christmas Day in Miami. I touched on this game in the beginning of the video. We are going to win in Christmas. 1 p.m., be there. Fun time for everybody on the Dolphins. All Fins fans, come through. Come dress up. Do whatever. Do your thing. Just come with your family. Enjoy yourself because Christmas Day in Miami should be in one for the books. We're going to beat Aaron Rodgers right here. Our defense is going to overpower his woefully incomplete offense. You know, his his lack of receivers will be the death of him. You know, he'll be very competitive. It's going to be a primetime game, a fun one to watch. At the end of the day, he's just not going to be able to squeeze out that magic. It's going to go to a final drive that Xavier Howard is going to bat down. No siree, Bobski. We win that game thanks to Xavier Howard and the boys. And Tua does enough. Get us the win as well. Week 17 in New England. This is where we go. We're right now, we're 10-5, and five, right? Right? We sweep the Patriots. You guys suck. If you're still listening to this or you somehow got to this point or one of your friends sent it, I hope so. I hope you're listening, New England, because you guys suck. Mac Jones, again, is Tua's son. Bill Bella Chicken is a clown. He's going senile, guys. He doesn't know how to draft. He drafted like a, like a third-round guard in the first round, you know. The Dolphins are going to be in their groove, firing on all cylinders. You know, we're 10-5. and five. We sweep the Pats to make us to make us 11-5, and five. boom, and then we close out against the freaking Jets, sweep you guys too, gang green, again, I understand you guys got good rookies, and you're promising, the AFC East, guys, all disrespect aside, is poised to be one of the most competitive divisions in the long run of the NFL, you know, Josh Allen, Tua, Mac Jones, Zach Wilson, but the team's will start bridging a lot closer in, in difference. You're going to see the Dolphins get closer to the Bills. The Patriots and the Jets are going to battle for third and fourth, but that's because the Jets will actually improve a little bit. Instead of four or three wins, they're going to get six wins, seven wins. The Patriots are sliding a little bit between that 8-9 win mark, but that's the gist of it. They're going to keep increasing, but we're going to sweep the Jets. We're going to sweep the Patriots. We're going to go 5-1 in the division. We're going to go 12-5 and five on the season. That's the Nando Talk prediction. I hope you guys enjoy that. 12-5, and five, I try to break it around through the season, just to recap, between the first four stretches of the games, the goal is to go two and two, three and one. By the bye, seven and three. Down the stretch, we beat the Texans, lose to the Niners, beat the Chargers, lose to the Bills if we beat them week three. If we beat them week three, we have to beat them week 15. We beat the Packers week 16 to bring us up to 10 and five. Sweep the Patriots, sweep the Jets, 12-5. and five. That's your Nando Talk prediction, guys. But you guys, just let me know what you think. Honestly, I'm very excited for this Dolphins season. If you guys can kill the games, you know, I'm a season ticket holder. 343, hold it down um, with my buddies. Shout out, you know, Nathan, Tommy, Alan, and Drew, and Big O, Big Q. You guys are the boys. You know, thank you, Big Q, Big Cuban, my boy. Um, thank you for riding with the seats with me thank you guys for listening to nano talk hope to catch you guys there i would say go to the pittsburgh game go to the patriots game or go to the christmas game but have a fun game whichever one you guys go to fins up enjoy the nando talk bada beam bada boom we're out
Thank you for enjoying.